Hi, today we're going to take a look at how to subtract mixed numbers with unlike denominators. Before getting into it, we need to remember that a mixed number, like this one, is the sum of a whole number and a proper fraction. Also, a proper fraction is a fraction where the numerator, the top number, is less than the denominator, the bottom number. One half is a proper fraction, given that the numerator one is less than the denominator two. Nice! Are you ready for the examples? In this example, we need to subtract 9 and 1 half minus 4 and 1 third. As you can see, these two mixed numbers have different denominators. To find the difference, first, we subtract the whole numbers, and in this problem, the whole numbers are 9 and 4. We put 9 minus 4, and 9 minus 4 is equal to 5. Next, we can put 5 in the answer. We have the difference of the whole numbers. It's time to subtract the fractions. The fractions are 1 half and 1 third. Don't change the order. We have 1 half minus 1 third. These two fractions have different denominators, 2 on the left and 3 on the right. To find the difference, we need to find the least common multiple of the denominators or the least common denominator. The first multiples of 2 are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and so on. The first multiples of 3 are 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, then we have 9, 12, 15 and so on. As you can see, the smallest number that we can find on both lists is 6. Then 6 is the winner, 6 is the least common denominator. Pay attention, because now, for each fraction, we're going to find an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 6. Let's start with 1 half. By one number should I multiply 2 to get 6? By 3, that is correct, because 2 times 3 is 6. Whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. So we we'll multiply by 3 over here, and 1 times 3 give us 3. Nice! Then we have the minus sign. On the other hand, pay attention, we are going to find an equivalent fraction to one third with a denominator of 6. By what number should I multiply 3 to get 6? By 2. 3 times 2 give us 6. Whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. And 1 times 2 give us 2. Finally, we need to subtract these two fractions with like denominators. 6 on the left, 6 on the right, 6 on this side, and we continue by subtracting the numerators, and 3 minus 2 give us 1. The difference of the fractions is 1 sixth. Finally, we add the difference of the fractions to the difference of the whole numbers, so we put 1 sixth next to 5. In that way, 9 and 1 half minus 4 and 1 third give us 5 and 1 sixth. Let's continue with another example. In this problem, we are going to subtract 8 and 7 ninths minus 4 and 2 thirds. These two mixed numbers have different denominators. To find the difference first, we subtract the whole numbers. And the whole numbers are 8 and 4 in this example. So we put 8 minus 4, and 8 minus 4 give us 4. Next, we can put 4 in the answer. We have the difference of the whole numbers. It's time to subtract the fractions. The fractions are 7 ninths and 2 thirds. In the same order, we put 7 ninths minus 2 thirds. These two fractions have different denominators, 9 on the left, 3 on the right. To find the difference, we need the least common denominator. The first multiples of 9 are 9 times 1 is 9, then we have 9 times 2, 18, then comes 27, 36, 45, and so on. The first multiples of 3 are 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, then we have 9, 12, 15, and so on. The smallest number that we can find on both lists is 9. Then, 9 is the least common denominator. Nice! Pay attention! For each fraction, we need an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 9. Let's start with 7 ninths. Hold on, this fraction already has a denominator of 9, so we don't need to make any changes. We put the same fraction, 7 ninths. Then we have minus sign and we are going to work with the second fraction. We are going to rewrite two thirds as an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 9. By what number should I multiply 3 to get 9? By 3, that is correct. Whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. So we multiply by 3 over here. And 2 times 3 give us 6. 
These two fractions have the same denominator, 9 on the left, 9 on the right, 9 on this side, and we continue by subtracting the numerators and 7 minus 6 give us 1. The difference of the fractions is 1 ninth. Finally, we add the difference of the fractions to the difference of the whole numbers, so we put 1 ninth next to 4. In that way, 8 and 7 ninths minus 4 and 2 thirds give us 4 and 1 ninth. Let's move on to the last examples. This problem is different than the previous ones. In this example, we need to subtract 5 and 1 half minus 2 and 3 fourths. These two mixed numbers have different denominators. To find the difference, usually we start by subtracting the whole numbers, and the whole numbers are 5 and 2 in this problem. So we put 5 minus 2, and 5 minus 2 give us 3. We can also put 3 in the answer. We have the difference of the whole numbers. It's time to subtract the fractions. The fractions are 1 half and 3 fourths. So we put in the same order 1 half minus 3 fourths. These fractions have different denominators. 2 over here, 4 over here. To find the difference, we need the least common denominator. The first multiples of 2 are 2 times 1 is 2, then we have 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. The first multiples of 4 are 4, 8, then we have 12, then comes 16, 20, and so on. As you can see, the smallest number that we can find on both lists is 4. Then 4 is the winner. 4 is the least common denominator. Then, for each fraction, we need an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 4. Let's start with 1 half. Pay attention. By what number should I multiply 2 to get 4? By 2, that is correct, because 2 times 2 give us 4. Whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. And 1 times 2 give us 2. Nice. Then we have the minus sign and over here, 3 fourths. Hold on. 3 fourths already has a denominator of 4, so we don't need to make any changes. We just put the same fraction. Now we need to subtract 2 fourths minus 3 fourths. These two fractions have the same denominator, 4 on the left, 4 on the right, but on this side, and we continue by subtracting the numerators, 2 minus 3. Wait a minute. We cannot subtract 3 from 2, because 3 is bigger than 2. The problem over here is that the second fraction, 3 fourths, is greater than the first fraction, 1 half. Let me show you. 1 half and 2 fourths are equivalent fractions. They represent the same value. Which fraction is bigger, 2 fourths or 3 fourths? 3 fourths is bigger, right? That means that the second fraction, 3 fourths, is greater than the first fraction, 1 half. This is a special case because the fractional part of the second mixed number is greater than the fractional part of the first mixed number. In cases like this, we need to follow a different procedure. I repeat, given that the fraction of the second mixed number is greater than the fraction of the first mixed number, we need to follow a different procedure. Pay attention to the strategy. First, we will convert both mixed numbers to improper fractions, and next, we will find the difference. Let's start with 5 and 1 half. To convert this mixed number to an improper fraction, we start by multiplying the denominator by the whole number, and then we add this result to the numerator. Here we go. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 gives us 11. 11, once again. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 gives us 11, and then we keep the denominator the same. To come over here. At this point, we should remember the improper fractions. An improper fraction is a fraction where the numerator, the top number, is greater than or equal to the denominator, the bottom number. 11 halves is an improper fraction, given that the numerator 11 is greater than the denominator 2. Nice! Then we have the minus sign, and we will do the same with 2 and 3 fourths. To convert this mixed number to an improper fraction, first we multiply the denominator by the whole number, and then we add this result to the numerator. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 gives us 11. 11 one more time? Let me see, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 gives us 11, that is correct, and then the denominator stays the same. Next, we need to subtract 11 halves minus 11 fourths. These two fractions have different denominators. 2 on the left, 4 on the right. So, we need the least common multiple of the denominators. But we already know that the least common multiple of 2 and 4 is 4. So next, for each fraction, we need an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 4. Let's start with 11 halves. Pay attention, by what number should I multiply 2 to get 4? By what number should I multiply 2 to get 4? 
by 2, because 2 times 2 give us 4. If we multiply by 2 on the bottom, we must multiply by 2 on the top. And 11 times 2 give us 22. 22 minus sign, and we will do the same with 11 fourths. However, this fraction already has a denominator of 4, so we don't need to readjust it. We just put the same fraction 11 fourths. Next, we need to subtract 22 fourths minus 11 fourths. These two fractions have the same denominator, 4 on the left, 4 on the right, we can put 4 on this side, and we continue by subtracting the numerators, 22 minus 11. 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. The answer is 11 fourths. Also, 11 fourths is an improper fraction, given that the numerator 11 is greater than the denominator 4. However, we don't need the answer as an improper fraction. If we start with two mixed numbers, we will finish with a mixed number. So finally, we will convert this improper fraction to a mixed number. Pay attention to the following question. How many times does 4 go into 11? How many times does 4 go into 11? What? 4 goes into 11 2 times. And then we multiply. 2 times 4 is 8. To get 11, we need to add 3. Once again, 2 times 4 is 8. To get 11, we need to add 3. And then we keep the denominator the same. 4 come over here. The final answer is 2 and 3 fourths. We can put that mixed number in this place. 2 and 3 fourths. Therefore, 5 and 1 half minus 2 and 3 fourths give us 2 and 3 fourths. That's all for today. If you want to learn more about mixed numbers, check out this playlist. And here you have another video. Have a good one and see you next lesson. Bye!